Hey everybody, it's Mati back with another RPG in the Box tutorial. Today we're going to focus on a little bit more of our map building skills so we can build a house and have different levels our player can navigate. By the end of this video, you should have enough knowledge to build your own maps and start creating your adventure. Let's jump in and start building our foreign prince's princely manor. Get started by creating a new map for the game. We'll call this one Home. Now click the asset library to add more assets to the game. We'll need various items for building, including walls, doors, a bed, and various other house objects. Select all the assets you'd like to build your building and click Import. Don't worry if you see an overwrite confirmation box, just click OK to update your existing assets. Now we can build out the base of our map. Use the base grass tile to lay out a grid square of your chosen size. Then select the wood floor tile and add that to the map as the floor of your building. Now we need to learn more about the grid height of the map. Notice if you try to add a wall tile, it makes the floor tile disappear. To add walls on top of the floor, first we need to move the grid height up by one voxel. Do this by using the raise tile grid button to move up by one. You can also use shift plus the mouse scroll wheel to move it up by increments. Ensure the grid height number shows one, then try adding walls again. Be sure to click the lock button to prevent accidental grid height movement. Now build a house scene using all of our assets. Add walls, corners, a door, and windows. Be sure to make the walls and corners face the outside edge of the floor so they align properly. Add some bookshelves, a bed, and any other object you'd like to put in the room. Finally, re-add any navigation that may have gone away when adding walls. Perfect, now we have a cutaway version of a house. Let's do some things that enhance the feel of our home. RPG in the Box has more magic for creating doors that open. Select the Edit tool and then drag select the tile in front of the door to the tile behind the door. Right click on the door and select Create Door. Interaction lines will be added to the door and a script will be added to the door to handle the interaction. Note that doors have specific requirements to work with, but since we already have a door, we don't have to worry about that right now. We can also add tooltips to objects to show when the player hovers with the mouse. Let's add some tooltips and a basic message to the object in the room. Don't forget to add interactions to those objects so that they will actually work. We'll throw the book at the bookshelf. We'll turn a new page on the bookshelf make the chest all the best the chest is better than the rest we're not going to sleep on the job with this bed that's right maybe this will be a cherry on top <laughs> cherry on top doing something with this will be such a treat okay <laughs> perhaps perhaps we'll table the rest of the puns for the moment Save the map and then open the startup script in the script's folder, change the name of the map in the script, click save and run the game to test the map. Is this really a house though? Can you imagine a rainy day going over well without a roof? I don't think so. Also, we can do way more with a house than a single level, so let's make this into a two-story house. Place a stairway somewhere on the first floor. Make sure to fix the navigation around the stairs so there's just one navigation path up the stairs. Move the grid height vertically by one full tile size by either clicking on the Raise Tile Grid Step button or holding the control key and scrolling the mouse wheel. The height should now show 17, so we can add a level to the house. Add the floor and then move the grid height to 18 and add walls again. Make sure to leave a cutout hole at the top for the stairs and then fix any navigation on this level, including connecting the stairs. Perfect, we have another level, but we have a problem. How can we hide the second floor while the player is in the house? Notice that this doesn't happen automatically when you're on the first floor except we can make this happen automatically. RPG in the Box has built-in auto-hide functionality, and this is done using groups. 
Select the tiles and objects you want to group, then right click and select grouping and add to group. Since we already know that this is going to be the second level of the house, we'll call this level two. Now we can look at the map properties. To do this, click a blank space on the map that has no other tiles or objects. The entity property tabs will become the map properties tab. From here, you can locate the group's property. Notice the group selection has some icons next to it. Arrow selects those tiles and objects that are in the group on the map. I with the X hides the object and tiles. I with the check marks shows the object and the tiles in the group. And X removes the group, but it also leaves the tiles and objects. Auto hiding tiles requires the use of a few groups. Let's start by hiding the second floor so we can get the first floor set up. Since we already have a group for level two, let's click on the hide button next to that group. Select all floor one, including the ground, tiles, and objects, and this time press G on your keyboard to quickly name a new group, which we'll call level one. This is where auto tiles come into play. Click back on map properties and choose level two and show the level. Then click the arrow to select all the tiles and objects. Before we do the next step, make sure you hold down the shift and alt key and uncheck the stairs. Press G and add a group to these tiles called level one hyphen hide. The name here is very important. When the player is on level one, it will hide all of the level one hyphen hide tiles. Check it out. When we're on level one, level two is invisible. When we walk outside or up the stairs, level two reappears. This is pretty cool, but we still need a roof to keep out the rain. Using the roof tiles and all of your mapping skills, add a roof to the house. Then select the roof tiles and add the groups level one dash hide and level two dash hide. This will ensure when you're inside the house, the roof is always hidden. Let's check it out. As you can see, walking outside shows the entire house. When we walk inside, each level of the house shows appropriately. You'll notice that while you're inside the house, the roof never shows. Here's a couple more tips for you that might help you build your maps faster. When using the place tool on a map, you can hold the alt key and left click on a tile or object to select the object for placement. If you don't want navigation when placing tiles, you can uncheck the auto connect navigation option. If you want tiles to show with a random rotation, select the random rotation option. This works really well with things like grass to make it look a little bit more natural. When placing or selecting tiles, you can use place mode to change how the tool works. Single mode will select or place tiles one at a time. Box mode will let you select or place tiles using a rectangle as you drag your mouse. Keep building with these tools and see what kind of maps you can create. And there you go, folks. You have most of the basics that you need in order to build your maps out and create your game's adventure. For our future tutorials, we'll be looking at things beyond just map building. This can include things like more advanced scripting methods, doing widgets on the screen, and the ability to fight monsters. As I mentioned previously, please check out the description below. It has some links to the RPG in a Box YouTube channel, which has much more in-depth tutorials on all the features and functions of RPG in a Box. Stop by twitch.tv Mati Makes if you want to join in on the fun and learn a little bit more about RPG in a Box and voxel art. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. What do we got here? Ooh, we have a tutorial. So amazing. Bookshelf, smush shelf. <laughs> Look, shelf, bookie, bookie. Read things now. Okay, I think, I think we've had our moment. We're good. We're good.